All right, so I've been following the events in Standing Rock with the Dakota Access Pipeline. And my, I know that you said better relations with indigenous people is a very important mandate of your government. So my question for you is, if the same situation were to happen here in Canada, what would you do differently and how would it look different? Uh, great, great question and a really important one. Um, First of all, the situation in Canada versus in the U.S. in terms of uh, regulatory systems, in terms of consultation and engagement with communities, with indigenous peoples, uh, scientific analysis is very, very different. Uh, we uh, committed to uh, strengthen the engagement with local communities, uh, engage much more robustly uh, than uh, the American process is with indigenous peoples, uh, to consult, to listen, to hear concerns, uh, and that's exactly what we've done. On the TMX pipeline, for example, there were uh, significant concerns by Indigenous communities along the route, particularly in BC. Uh, there were significant concerns by Canadians expressed around uh, increased tankers, uh, the concerns around spills, how we're going to protect our oceans, including our marine mammals. These were things that people brought up and highlighted as real concerns uh, that would have to be addressed before uh, we could get uh, I any forward movement on uh, a project like that. People highlighted concerns around climate change. How can we pretend uh, that we're going to hit our, our Paris targets, they asked, uh, if we're also approving pipelines? So these were all the questions people asked, legitimate, serious questions. Uh, and at the same time, from the very beginning, from the, my earliest days as a politician, I pointed out that one of the fundamental responsibilities of any Canadian Prime Minister is to get our resources to markets, whether it was fish and furs hundreds of years ago, whether it was uh, you know, grain on railroads a hundred years ago, uh, or now uh, ways of getting our, our fossil fuel resources and other resources to markets. But in the 21st century, we need to do that responsibly and thoughtfully. Uh, and that means uh, being smart about the environment, being smart about the jobs, being smart about the risks that are undergoing, being smart about partnerships with Indigenous peoples. That's exactly what we stayed focused on. So uh, we put in place a pan-Canadian framework uh, to demonstrate that we have a plan uh, to work with all the provinces to reach our emissions reduction targets. Uh, we uh, worked with the Coast Guard and other partners to put in place a historic level of investment in the Oceans Protection Plan to give uh, Coast Guard and uh, re responders the tools to respond to any accidents that happen. We worked with indigenous communities along the pipeline route to demonstrate that it could be done responsibly and 39 different indigenous communities signed benefit sharing agreements worth uh, over 300 million dollars. Yes, there are some communities that continue to have concerns, but there are a lot of others uh, who are in favor of it. And you can't ever expect unanimity on a big project. Uh, but what I've done and what I will continue to do uh, is go to the people who disagree uh, with this decision and explain why it's in Canada's best interest, how we're doing the best job we can do and need to do to mitigate uh, the potential negative impacts because the jobs, the growth, uh, the, uh, the, the opportunities that comes with getting our uh, resources uh, to new markets in Asia uh, are worth it, uh, the way we're getting oil off of rail cars and into pipelines, which is safer, is also a lot smarter. And uh, this is all done in a way that is thoughtful about moving forward on both, making sure we have good jobs uh, and a growing economy and a protected environment at the same time. Uh, that's the commitment we've made, and that's a very different situation uh, from what happened uh, at Standing Rock in, uh, in, in the United States. But thank you very much for your question.